Hello everyone, my name is Anangha and I'm part of the STAT 107 uh, data science discovery team and in this video today we are going to be learning about confounders and causal links. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have here uh, anesthesia and ADHD. So a study published in the journal uh, you know, found that children who have more than one surgery with anesthesia before their second birthday have a higher chance of developing ADHD than those who had never had general anesthesia. The researchers examined the medical records of 341 children diagnosed with ADHD to find out who essentially had undergone a surgical procedure with anesthesia before they were two. So it looks like here that the researchers just um, examined these these medical records, right? They didn't really put the, you know, children into groups or anything, into uh, control or treatment groups. They just kind of examined what was going on. Um, and the results, they found that 18% of children who had two or more surgeries with this anesthesia when they were babies eventually developed ADHD compared to only 7%. So it looks like there is a difference here, but we do want to notice the nature of this study. So here it says the study is an example of a blank. So we know that the researchers only examined the medical records, right? Since there was no <clears throat> proper placement of these children into treatment groups, what we're just doing here is just examining uh, right the the records of these children over time and and seeing who developed ADHD as as the years went by, right? So the researchers here have no control of which subject is in which group. They're just simply observing the fact that, okay, uh, these children had uh, n number of surgeries with general anesthesia, and 18% of them, right, of all children that they observed, eventually developed ADHD. So we know here that this study is, is really an observational study because we are simply observing the fact that um, the, we're just observing these medical records, right? We're not placing these children into into groups of, you know, who gets how, however many surgeries, right? I, I don't think that would really be ethical either. So the second question is, does this study show that um, anesthesia exposure before two causes ADHD. So we want to look at the wording here, right? And this also kind of relates to, this, to the first question. This was an observational study. Now we know the difference between an observational study versus an experiment is really whether you can uh, whether this implies uh, a cause, right? Whether there's really um, a, a cause versus an association. Over here, since we, since there's no, you know, randomization of these children into treatment groups, there's no random assignment going on. There's there's not really any um, control or, or proper placement of these children into these groups. And since this is only an observational study where we're kind of just observing these, uh, these medical records over time, we can't really say that anesthesia exposure causes ADHD. Remember, there might be a lot of confounders here that go on, um, and we're not sure if anesthesia for sure causes ADHD. It might be an effect of another confounding variable. We just know that we've seen a somewhat strong relationship between anesthesia exposure and ADHD, right? So since this is, since this is uh, an observational study, right, we only have enough evidence to prove that there is an association between uh, X and Y, between anesthesia exposure and ADHD. So we can actually, we can't say that there was a strong like, causal link here because of the nature of this study. So here the correct answer would be, okay, so A looks good. Um, we can cross out, sorry, we can cross out C and D. 
Uh, and then B says, no, since I was exposed before H2, would have to develop ADHD at a rate at least three times higher. And that doesn't really relate to the question, right? So A, no, this study only shows that there's an association between anesthesia exposure before H2 and ADHD. It's not possible to conclude whether it is actually responsible. And that's what we kind of uh, discussed here, that because it's an observational study, we can only assume, we can only show that there's somewhat strong relationship. There's a somewhat strong association. We can't necessarily say that this caused this. And that's why you see many famous observational studies aren't, they they cannot show causality, right? Because they don't have that, uh, you know, the, the standard, the gold trial, the gold design uh, experiment, right? Where we have a randomized double-blind uh, controlled uh, trials, right? Here, we only have uh, some a study where we're just observing the people, where we're observing the subjects. So really famous observational studies, even though they have, you know, a lot of subjects that they're observing over many, many years, um, the only kind of limit here is that we can't really show that uh, causal link, only that association. So now here it says, based only on that information below, state whether the following are confounders, causal links or neither. So exposure to anesthesia may damage brain development leading, leading to ADHD. So for these kinds of questions, we always want to create that diagram, right, where that middle variable is mainly the the variable that we are discussing if it is a confounder causal link or neither and then on the sides kind of go our independent and dependent variables so here our independent variable is really that anesthesia exposure and I think it says let's see, more than one surgery, right? <clears throat> so we can say more than one surgery with anesthesia exposure, and then that dependent variable is really uh, whether that causes ADHD, right? So, and the variable we're talking about is exposure to anesthesia may damage brain development leading to ADHD. So this exposure leads to, like, brain uh development damage and now we can see that okay so this exposure may lead to brain development damage leading to adhd so how do we how does the independent dependent variable relate to the actual variable of of brain damage that we're talking about well we know that and, and, and it even tells us in this statement here that the exposure to anesthesia leads to, may damage brain development, right? The exposure is what's leading to this brain development damage, which then leads to, it says leads to ADHD, right? And you can see the nature of our arrows here. When we find a variable that is a causal link, it essentially relates to the independent variable it is something that is in our in our treatment really that causes the response so it's most of the times something that is within the treatment itself that causes the response here we know that the exposure to anesthesia because of you know the the chemicals inside it it may directly cause brain development damage right so the some the the stuff that the variable the exposure to brain damage, uh, exposure to anesthesia is a variable that is inside the treatment itself that causes a response. So it's related to the treatment, which then causes that response. So we know that the exposure to anesthesia may lead to brain development damage, leading to ADHD. We can say it's a, it's a clear path, right, and that this would actually be a causal link because this is a variable that's related to the treatment, something inside the treatment, which causes the response. So this uh, statement would be a causal link, the, the, that exposure that causes brain uh, development damage. Now this one says ADHD can cause lower impulse control. So we know the, I guess that statement in the middle is, lower 
impulse control <clears throat> and the the treatment is is the same here more than one uh surgery anesthesia uh, exposure and then the response is same we're measuring how many of those children developed adhd and now let's see what that relationship is so Lower impulse control. It says ADHD can cause lower impulse control. Okay, so I guess we have a backwards arrow here, right? ADHD can cause lower impulse control, but does this lower impulse control even somehow relate to anesthesia? And the answer is no, right? There's actually no, no relationship between lower impulse control and anesthesia, like surgery exposure, right? So here we can see that somewhere here, there's, there's no link, right? This variable only relates to our response. It does not really relate to our treatment. So because of this, this variable is actually neither a confounder nor a causal link because for both confounders and causal links, those both need to be related to the treatment and to the response. For confounders, that is a variable that is related to the treatment and related to the response because it causes both the treatment and the response. For the causal link, that's a variable that is related, to something that is inside the treatment that causes a response. So both of these types of variables are somehow related to the treatment and response. This lower impulse control is not related to anesthesia at all. So we know that this is actually um, not an example of a causal link nor a confounder. So. These I, I I think the these are the one of the easier variables to identify just because it's something that you know doesn't really have a clear relationship with either our treatment or response. So that's pretty easy to identify. So now last one it says babies who have serious medical conditions may be more likely to have surgeries which require general anesthesia. And a serious medical conditions could put them at a high risk for ADHD. So here we have serious medical conditions and uh, the, the treatment is the same. More than one surgery requiring general anesthesia. So there's this significant, I guess, um, you know, more than one surgery of anesthesia exposure. And then here we have ADHD. And then this is like the, the variable that we're talking about, right? So now let's kind of identify the relationship between this, this variable to the treatment and to the response. So we know that it says here, babies who have serious medical conditions may be more likely to have surgeries which require general anesthesia. So these serious medical conditions may cause the babies to have more than one surgery, which require general anesthesia, right? It says right here. And the serious medical conditions could put them at a higher risk for ADHD. So because of these serious medical conditions, they have now a higher chance of ADHD. It may also lead to ADHD, but these serious medical conditions may also lead to more than one surgery with general anesthesia exposure. So now you see that our relationship with this variable to our treatment and response is kind of conflicting. Right, we don't see a direct causal path which leads from, from treatment to this variable to directly to the response. We actually see that this variable causes a treatment but also causes a response. And that is exactly an example of a confounding variable, right? It's a variable that is related and causes a treatment and a variable that is related and causes the response. And because of this, you know, scientists or anyone doing an experiment may think that, oh, like the treatment may directly cause a response, but the, the, the real fact is that this confounding variable is actually causing the response. That's why it's very important to identify these confounding variables before we actually make any conclusions or before we even design the experiment itself so we know that we can isolate these confounders and make sure that the treatment itself is directly causing the response and not some other variable, you know, kind of getting in the way. So here, this would actually be a confounder 
because this is a variable that is directly related and causes a treatment. The serious medical conditions may cause these babies to have more than one surgery, and serious medical conditions may lead uh, may lead to a higher risk for ADHD. So uh, this is pretty much it for our question. If you have any uh, concerns, let me know, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.